Good morning, everyone. It's good to be with you on this beautiful, sunny Thursday morning. Uh, last night we had the church council, and I, I just want everyone to know that uh, St. Mark's is very active during this time of shelter in place. So much is going on. Uh, we heard last night from our youth and how the youth programs are continuing to unfold in some really wonderful ways and our growing young program incorporating youth into every aspect of church life is, is really making progress. So I was delighted to hear the report last night. We also heard a report from the communications team who are working really hard on the, the video production and the sound in the sanctuary. We're looking at a complete revamp of video, sound, and lighting in the sanctuary so that we can uh, make sure that we have quality worship both online and in person in the sanctuary. We heard about the advocacy, ongoing advocacy activity of the life of the congregation, which has continued unabated through our ACT group during this pandemic season. We also heard from uh, the United Methodist Women. Uh, Bonnie Fields is just so proud of the fact that uh, UMW is now back to a pretty much full program online. Uh, we're making really good use of Zoom. And of course, I've been excited about the groups that have been meeting during Lent. I reported to on the Ash Wednesday service, which was so wonderful. And uh, there are a number of areas where uh, it's just an exciting place to be part of the St. Mark's congregation. We also talked about, we are going to pull together a task force now to uh, look at what it would mean to return to in-person worship in the sanctuary. We realize it's going to be a transition and it's going to take a while, but things seem to be easing up and anything can happen. It's a, going from day to day, a different reality. So we will uh, be ready when the time comes to uh, to move into the next phase of the life of St. Mark's. So um, a reminder that um, this coming weekend, we celebrate Holy Communion. So as you prepare to watch this weekend's worship, please make sure you have some uh, bread or other food, some juice or another beverage with you so that you can take part in the, the service of Holy Communion. Oh, I had an email from uh, Janine Stevens, which I think was very helpful. A reminder that, oh my goodness, I can't get all the regulations entirely straight. But people over 65, people who are essential workers, um, including particularly educators at this point, are eligible for vaccine. And she pointed me to a website, vaccinefinder.org, vaccinefinder.org that lists all the places um, in your zip code where vaccines are available or not available at, at this moment. So if you're eligible, please do check in uh, if you've been having trouble finding a place to get uh, a vaccine. Um, this coming weekend's worship uh, moves on uh, and we talk about the Holy Spirit and we talk about the church. Uh, the Holy Spirit, I think, at times has been confusing for people, especially when you've heard so much talk about the Trinity, about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that has been a helpful model for people down the centuries. And I'm not so sure how helpful it is for us now. We need to find some different language. We experience God in lots of different ways, and it's truly wonderful. And it shouldn't be complicated. Uh, the Spirit of God is alive in you. It's God energy in you. And that God energy is the energy of God's love. And it's really something worthy of great celebration. And, and, uh, and also it, it's transformative. It makes your life very, very different. And part of that is that the Holy Spirit is alive in you, not only for your own benefit, but to enable other people to grow in their life of faith and love. So it's a community event, this Holy Spirit, this gift of God's love. And that's why we have the church. And the church is a community designed to, um, to
to help people to uh, affirm that love within themselves and, and to share it and to build each other up in their awareness and their tuning into the power of God's love in their lives. So I, I, I think uh, this is all very exciting. And uh, I say at the beginning of my sermon that I, I don't understand why people the world over aren't clamoring to get into church so that they can find out more about how to tune their lives into God's love energy. So with those thoughts in mind, I invite you to join me in a prayer. This prayer, um, I think I've used before, but right back at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, it's from Julian of Norwich, the great saint of the church in the 14th century in England. Uh, she was an extraordinary woman. We know nothing really about her or very little about her. We know that she was born in 1343 and she was six years old when the Black Death hit. So she lived her whole life with plague around her. And, and some sources say that her family were killed by the, the plague. We don't know all the details. But as well as the plague, there was a lot of civil unrest. There was what's called the Peasants' Revolt, and there were other uh, insurgency disturbances in, in Norwich during her lifetime. So she was perturbed that so many of the leaders of the church were interpreting the, the plague and other events as an expression of God's judgment on a sinful generation. And she taught something very different, and it comes through in this prayer. So I invite you to join me in prayer. Let's pray together. In you, God Almighty, we have our preservation and our bliss. In you, Christ, we have our restoring and our saving. You are our mother, brother, and savior. In you, our Lord, the Holy Spirit, is marvelous and plenteous grace. You are our clothing. For love, you wrap us and embrace us. You are our maker, our lover, our keeper. Teach us to believe that by your grace, all shall be well and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Amen. And my prayer is that all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well with you in these days. May God's blessing and love surround you this day and every day.